lot of hard work done by the Legion and the county to get our monument relocated here to Veterans Park. Thank you all for coming. This time, like the presentation of colors, and Tabitha Ketchum will sing the national anthem. God, ruler of heaven, earth, and all universes, we come to you today thanking you for our freedom, asking your blessings on everyone here, asking your blessings on those who've lost loved ones that we're here to remember. We pray, dear Lord, you go with us through this day, through the further journeys of our life. Watch over us, lead, guide, and direct us. Bless our great county, bless our great state, bless our great nation, dear Lord, bless our commander-in-chief. Go with us now through this day, through the further journeys of our life. Keep us safe and forgive us from our sins. In your holy name I pray. Amen. Amen. At this time I would like to present Mr. John Black, the chairman from the American Legion who headed this entire project for us. He did a wonderful job. John, please come on up. At this time, uh, according to the program, I'm supposed to introduce our guest speaker, but I'm going to change the chronology of that in just a moment. Uh, Frank and Jerry, would you unveil the monument for us, please? Good morning. Good morning. It's an, uh, an honor to speak at this dedication ceremony, Memorial Day 2019. 
1994, American Legion Post 111 provided leadership construction of the Veterans Memorial. Financial support came from Paulin County Citizens, the Paulin County Board of Commissioners, and from American Legion Post 111. At this time, I'd also like to recognize the commander of Post 111 at the time, Wendell Rakestraw. Would you stand up, Wendell? Wendell headed this thing uh, <laughs> along with several people that are not with us today, sadly. But uh, that crew got it done, and kudos to you. Thank you, Wendell. Give God Amen. The Veteran Memorial that you see here today was dedicated June 1st, 1996 on county property located on Watson Drive. That location, for many reasons, has become less significant. Current location is more significant because it's more visible daily to the citizens of Paulding County. It's easily accessible, it has adequate parking, it's located beside a five-pointed star that y'all are sitting by, representing each branch of the military. It's located in Veterans Park, so appropriately named. As chairman of the Veterans Memorial Relocation Committee of the Legion Post, I'd like to recognize and thank Bill Flesh, Commander, Dave Carmichael, County Commissioner, Chairman, Jerry Rochelle, he was a committee member with me, along with Bill Flesh, members of the Paulin County Commission, citizens of Paulin County who generously donated American Legion Post 111 and mostly you for being here today. Thank you. As you can see from this beautiful memorial relocation, it's a job well done. And I was told specifically not to mention this guy's name. I don't know where he's at. Sorry, Scott. I gave, uh, well, Jerry and Bill and I went to before the commission in April, is that right, Jerry? April, I think, and proposition getting this thing moved. I'm talking about this past April. And, and since then, this guy, Scott, who I'm not supposed to mention, he's got it done with bids. He's got it done with under tremendous pressure by me, uh, getting the logistics and contractors together and getting it done. I'm telling you, the middle of this week, the sod, <laughs> concrete was poured. We were down to the wire. Scott, you got it done. Thank you. Am I in trouble, Scott? <laughs> All right. At the risk of doing a little plagiarism, uh, these words were given to me by Jerry Rochelle on the committee. His wife happens to be my sister. Uh, these words were given to me, and I'm going to read them just as they were given to me. <clears throat> We dedicate this site as a sacred place, a place where citizens can visit often to honor, respect, remember the sacrifices and the lives given. Excuse me. A place where veterans gather to share experiences with each other. A place where veterans can sit alone to ponder thoughts they may never share. A place where children can be taught lessons of freedom from their parents, grandparents, friends. Excuse me, I get kind of emotional about this one. It's where true, true heroes from places like the trenches of France, the forest of Bella Wood, the beaches of Normandy, Pearl Harbor, the cane fields of the Philippines, the rice paddies and jungles of Guam, Okinawa, Japan, Korea, Iwo Jima, the distant lands of Iraq and Afghanistan will be remembered a place for 89 names listed on this veterans monument will never be forgotten. I ask for a salute to our monument to these men. Now, What'd I drop? Oh. Yeah, what 
Okay. At this time, I'd like to introduce our speaker. Uh, beginning September 1968, Brother Dave Carmichael attended Vanderbilt University on a football scholarship, played SEC football, 68-72. In 1972, he graduated from Yellowbilt University, Bachelor of Engineering, Civil Engineering, and I'm going to tell you it's hot, and I'm not going to list everything on this page. If I did, I'll keep you here too long. Uh, December 74, he did landings, traps, as we call them, on the USS landing aircraft carrier, complete training as a Marine pilot. That's a wrong statement. We say the Army and Air Force had pilots, but Marine and Navy had aviators. In 74 to 78, Skyhawk pilot, weapons tactics instructor at the United States Marine Corps. Uh, he moved to Paulding County in 1979. 1989, Department of Transportation Highway Engineer, managed construction of 278. 27, Bremen, Bremen Bypass. 91, Georgia Office of Transportation Aerial Photography Pilot. I should say an aviator. 2002, uh, retired United States Marine Corps as a colonel. 2012, retired from Georgia Aviation Authority. 2013, Paulding County Board of Commissioners Post 1 Commissioner. 2017, became Chairman of Paulding County Board of Commissioners. I present to you our speaker today, and somebody that's very instrumental in us being what we're here for today to memorialize this. He's also a member of the American Legion Post 111. Yes, sir. Before we really get going here, let's uh, face the flag and pledge the flag together. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, the Republic Hello everyone, I'm delighted, I'm joyous to be in your presence, each and every one of you, uh, as we share this uh, special day together and as we remember those who have gone before and have made the ultimate sacrifice and also just veterans uh, that assemble here. Uh, it's great to be with Paulding County as always, and I'm sure we've got some visiting Countyans with us also. Um, as has already been mentioned, we finally married up our Veterans Monument with our Veterans Park. And we're where we need to be today, and this monument's where it needs to be today. So, um, <clears throat> we, need, we just need to remember the sacrifices made to our, uh, our country, and this is a wonderful place for the monument to be seen and appreciated. I've been here as late as 12 midnight many times and as early as five or so in the morning. And unless it's raining or snowing, there are a couple of cars parked out here and there's somebody that's out here walking, jogging, praying, or in the daytime, you see a lot of kids out here playing. So it'll get a lot of views here, it'll get a lot of recognition instead of just being over in the parking lot behind the old bank building. Very, very, very excited about it. So, Memorial Day is about memories, isn't it? But you know, none of us would think that they're very pleasant or they're, they're very sweet. You know, they're memories that we need to have, that we need to spend time remembering, but it's uh, not anything that we, uh, you know, we re really mourn over all the losses. There. Uh, 89 names on this monument behind me, and uh, I've read most of them, I know two of them, I have known two of them, and it's so special that people can walk up there and, and at least see the names of those that are gone before. Um, what we're really here about today is those who have died early deaths, right? Early deaths, giving up years, what, what could have been family, what could have been a spouse, what could have been children, a career. Today we remember with great reverence those who have fallen, those who have been killed on the battlefield. Thousands have served, and yes, many have died. 
<coughs> including these 89 names behind us. My dad, Benjamin Carmichael, was a Marine Corps corporal and he was a wireman. They didn't have uh, computers and not even many radios in some cases, so he would lay out the wire. And he made three amphibious landings. He landed on Guam, Okinawa, and Guadalcanal. So I feel blessed, I feel fortunate just to be standing here today because Dad came back. Dad came back, but a lot did not come back. They wore the uniform and died for our precious America. We all know that America is different. America was founded on principles of inalienable rights, freedom from the almighty God given by the almighty God with all men created equal. And the greatest memory of all is the memory when God broke into history 2,000 years ago and, his gave, and gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die for all. So Jesus Christ is an example of sacrifice and of dying for that cause, similarly or parallel to the fact that our military folks in the past died for, for the causes of freedom. So Christ is also an example of the resurrected life, and I think we have a wonderful promise that maybe some of these people that you all know on this monument that you'll see them at a later date. So this morning, uh, we're, we're on hallowed ground with new turf. What makes it hallowed? What makes it holy? What makes it so very special? It's because we're here. We, we in Pauline County and the surrounding area do dedicate this land to the esteemed men and women, the soldiers, the airmen, the coasties, the sailors and Marines who served. There are veterans who have served, uh, and some of you may have served. Uh, is there any World War II veterans that are here today? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we come on up through the different conflicts, Korea, Vietnam, Grenada, the Gulf War, Bosnia, Kosovo, Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, Libya. Uh, and on this Memorial Day, we also remember that, that freedom is, as we've heard the saying, freedom definitely is not free. It would cost your life certainly far from free. So uh, today we remember all the servicemen and women, all the veterans who have locked arms uh, for our precious United States of America. Now I'm gonna shift gears just for a second and I'm gonna get a partner up here and I was looking around uh, during the earlier part of the service and I'm glad there's some young people, young adults and uh, even teenagers that are in the group here. Raise your hand if you're a teenager. I see, see a few teenagers here. Well, the, the, it's gonna, in large part, this next part is gonna be about you. Um, the veterans understand what Memorial Day is all about. We may get a lump in our throat or a tear in our eye when we think about the veterans that have given, given it all. But some of you younger citizens may not understand so well. So I'm gonna close with a story and I am gonna get some help here. It's a true story about a young 16-year-old girl named Nancy. It's a story that brings to life the reality of death and what dying for one's country is all about. So Nancy had a grandmother. Y'all got a grandmother? What do you call her? She, uh, granny, grandma, nana. Nancy called her grandmother Meemaw. You know, if you call your grandmother Meemaw? Um, on one Memorial Day years ago, Nancy was leaning against an oak tree in her little town and the parade was going by. You know what? She was wishing that she were invisible. She was keeping her distance from her parents as teenagers tend to do. As they were sitting in the lawn chair and her little brothers and sisters were scampering around and playing and she hoped none of her friends saw her there. God forbid they caught her waving one of those small little American flags that were bought at a Ben Franklin store. Today it's, I guess would be the Dollar General. <clears throat> at 16, she was too old 
and she was definitely too cool for small town Memorial Day parades. She thought I ought to be at the lake. I ought to be at the lake with my friends. But no, the all day festivities were mandatory in her family. The high school band marches by, the, the fire truck goes by all polished up with a fireman blasting on the siren. And the troop of World War II veterans went by and most of them looked a little snug in their, in their uniforms. Then came the five black convertibles. The mayor was in the first convertible and was handing out programs. Nancy thought, I don't need to look at one of those. I know everyone that's on there. That's supposed to wake everybody up. So that's my timeout signal. For when I, I'm going to let <clears throat> uh, Shalini come up now. And she's a teenage girl. And she's gotten to be a friend of mine and her parents. And she volunteered and said that she would come and kind of tell the rest of the story, which really relates to us what it's like to be a hero, a Memorial Day hero. So Shalini, I appreciate so much you're doing this. You gotta stand pretty close to this or else carry it around. I knew Uncle Bud's name was on the program as it had been every year since he was killed in Italy. He was our family's war hero. My grandmother, I call Mima, was in the next convertible. She was perched on the back seat, smiling and waving. She had her corsage in her lapel and a sign in gold embossed letters on the car, car door that said Golden Star Mother. That was when you had a son who was killed in the war. I hid behind trees so I wouldn't have to meet her gaze. It wasn't because I didn't love her or appreciate her. She taught me how to sew and play softball and so many other things. She made great cinnamon rolls, which we always ate after the parade. What embarrassed me was all the attention she got from her son who died so many years ago. With four other children and a dozen grandchildren, why linger on this one long ago loss? The rest of our Memorial Day, was, the rest of our Memorial Day ritual was equally scripted. No use in trying to get out of it. I followed my family back to Meemaw's house where there was the usual softball game in the backyard and the same old reminiscing about Uncle Bud in the kitchen. I retreated to the living room to watch TV. There I found myself staring at that old army photo of Bud on the bookcase. He was the uncle I'd never known. I must have looked at it a thousand times, so proud of his crested cap and that knotted tie. His uniform was decorated with military emblems. I picked up the photo and turned it over. Yellowing tape held a prayer card that read Lloyd Bud Heisman, 1925 to 1944, a great hero. 19 years old when he died. Not much older than I was, but a great hero. How could you be a hero at 19? Then Meemaw came in the room. She talked of Uncle Bud as she did every year, about his little rat terrier named Jiggs that would ride in the Chevy Coupe with him. That Bud was a hard worker, she'd say. He'd bring me his wages from his various jobs. He'd say, Mama, someday I'm gonna buy you a brand new farm, I promise. Sometimes I wonder about that boy, dying alone in a muddy ditch in a foreign country he'd only just read about. I thought of that scared kid who jumped out of the foxhole in front of an avenging enemy only to be downed by a sniper. I couldn't reconcile the image of a boy and his dog with that of a stalwart soldier. Meemaw stood beside me looking at the photo. Meemaw asked, what's a hero? She opened a small metal box and sat down on the bed next to me. These are Bud's things, she said. They sent them to us after he died. She opened the lid and handed me a telegraph dated October 13, 1944. The Secretary of State regrets to inform you that your son, Lloyd, was killed in Italy. Suddenly I thought, what would I have done if I received a telegraph like that? Meemaw continued talking. Here's Bud's wallet. Even today it was caked with dried mud. And it was Bud's driver's license with the date of his 16th birthday. I compared it with the driver's license I had just received. And in it was a photo of Bud holding a little spotted dog. There was another photo of a pretty dark haired girl. I asked Meemaw, who's this? She said, this is Marie. Bud dated her in high school. He wanted to marry her when he came home. And I thought, a girlfriend? Marriage? How heartbreaking to have a life, plans, and hopes for a future so brutally snuffed out. Also in the box was a gold watch, a sympathy letter from President Roosevelt, and another from Bud's commanding officer. A medal shaped like a heart, trimmed with a purple ribbon. At the very bottom of the box was the deed to my Meemaw's house. Why is this in here, I asked. Meemaw smiled and said, Bud bought me this house. After his death, the U.S. government gave me $10,000, and with it, I built this house where I'm still living. For a long while, the two of us sat there on the bed. When we put the wallet, the metal, the letters, the watch, the photos, and the deed back in the metal box, I finally understood why it was so important for me and Meemaw to remember Bud on this day. He really was a true American hero because he died for what he believed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shalini. And... <clears throat> 
we, um, we believe he died for what he believed. We believe in America. We believe it's founded on godly principles. We believe America is worth defending. I personally believe America is worth giving our lives for, giving my life for. And, you know, in a lot of ways, whatever you're doing now, military or non-military, uh, in different ways, all of you are giving your life to America by, by making Paulding County better and making our country better. I'm going <clears> to... <throat> I'm going to close with a, a quote by Martin Luther King, who was not in the military, but some of you, probably all of you have heard this quote, he said there, if there's nothing worth dying for, there is nothing worth living for. So we give a great honor today to our men and women of the military who have gone before and given the ultimate and I just thank you for allowing me to speak today and for us to remember uh, those that have gone before. Thank you. At this time, we'll have the presentation of the wreath by David Altweiss, Senior Vice Commander for American Legion Post 111. This time we will have a moment of silence for all those that we have lost.
going to present a military type hat to each of the oldest member of the branch of service. 